Hello, this is Lex Berman, and I'm going to talk about opening geo packages in R for geospatial data. So I've got a folder here. This will be my set working directory folder, and I've got two geo packages that I've unzipped into their own folders. And these are basically two regions, north and south, and uh, I'm going to go into R and start working with it. So I need to load some of these R libraries. Um, definitely need uh, RGDAL and SF and DB layer. I think I probably need all of these. Here's a set working directory, and then here's where I'm actually pulling in the geo package south and geo package north, just setting them up. And then here's where I can go in and list all the layers in one of them. So I've just listed the layers in the south. One, and you can see here's all the layers that are available. Those are tabular data layers related to the geo package. So I've already done a bunch of them. Um, now I'm going to do 15 minutes. So essentially, um, what I want to do is I want to set this TR 15 minutes as the tabular data that I want to pull in for that particular data frame. And then I've got another one for the other, uh, oops. The other data frame, just copy that. Okay, so TR 15 minutes. So I've listed the layers. Now I'm going to go in and pull in that south data. Here it is, south, south, and then it'll pull it into the data frame. And when it's done, it should load up into the console here. You can see I've got 34,000 variables for that south data frame, just for the TR 15 minute data. And then I'll do the same for the north list the layers, those are the same names, and then I'll pull in that north data. I've already set the variable that I want here, which should be exactly the same in my case, because I want to bind them together. And now I'll pull that in, and this stop sign means it's working, so it's pulling in those variables. There they are. So I've got a table now with 84,000 observations in it. And now I'm going to check the difference between the two. I'm basically saying, like, are the column names the same in both of these data frames? And the output, if there were any differences, there would be some columns of the output, and there aren't any, so they're the same. So that's kind of good. So now I can I can just bind them together into one data frame for the whole works. And here it is. So there's now 119,000 observations that I'm working with. And now I'll go get the spatial data, which is was called blocks in each of those OGR layer lists, and I'm pulling in the first one for the north. Now I'm pulling in the second one for the south. It's really pretty fast, and now I'll just check the class. It's a, it's an SF data frame. You can see down here. And now I'm just uh, basically checking the CRS for each, um, just to make sure what I'm working with. It's WGS84. So that's okay. And then now I'm going to take the mass blocks and I'm going to bind them together. So now it's bound together the spatial data, which is already done. It's really nice. If you look at it, you'll see that it's spatial data in the sense that it's got a geometry column, uh, but it's you know basically all held in the data frame. Now, um, the same CRS, oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't join it together yet that it's joining it and now it's done and then there it is it's the same 4326 um, you can see that it's now joined the all this tabular data with the spatial data that's what I wanted and now I'm going to um, take the block ID which if you scroll up and look at it you'll see that it's the standard census block ID so it's here somewhere. Here it is. So here's the standard census block ID. And the first two digits of it, the first two characters, because this is a string column, is, is 25. And that's the Massachusetts. So essentially, um, what I want to do now is I want to create a new column that's called prefix. And it will contain the block ID but only starting from the first character, only two characters. So basically it just takes the first two characters, trims them, and adds them to a new column called prefix. So that's done. And now if I look at the 
If I look at the data again, I'll see that there it is. I've got my column. That's what I wanted. Now what I want to do is filter the join to only the Massachusetts items. So it's only the rows that have the value 25 in the prefix column. So that's done. That's pretty fast. And now I'm going to output to a new shapefile. So I'll call it 15 minutes. I've already done various other layers. So this one's going to output all of the results that I've done so far to a new shapefile. And it's working on that. So basically what's happened is I've taken two geo packages. I brought in the layer, the tabular data layer that I wanted to for each of the two, checked them to make sure they have the same columns, bound them together, and then I brought in the, both of the spatial data blocks, bound those together, and then joined them to the tabular data, and then filtered it down to Massachusetts, which is what I wanted, and saved it out to a new shapefile. So now if we go to, you know, a GIS application like QGIS, and we look in the target folder, there it is, 15 minutes, the one I just did. And we open that up. Then you see that it's trimmed to Massachusetts. So the, the filter totally worked. And if you want to take a quick look at the symbology here, we could grab a graduated symbol for the column, for example, workers C000, and the year is 2017. So basically they uh, examined a rush hour case in 2017 for these blocks, and they found out all the workers in those blocks that were within 15 minute commute of work by transit. And you can see the numbers are fairly low. I mean, because most people don't live within 15 minutes of, of their jobs by transit. Um, but we should see some in the, in the city core anyway. So that's loaded. And you can zoom in and take a closer look once it's uh, finished reloading. There you go. And there we go. So now I've shown you how to bring Geo package data into R, along with some tabular data, do some binds, do some filtering, export to a shapefile, and open it up in GIS. I hope that helps people dealing with geo packages in R. I thought it was pretty cool myself. Thanks.